Good morning, Holy Spirit family. This Sunday's readings call to mind Pope Francis' strong advice that priests and leaders of the church must be shepherds who smell like sheep. The scriptures remind us that the shepherd shall bring peace and justice to his people, shall reconcile differences, unite all peoples, and teach, minister, and serve God's people with compassion that mirrors God's own. Let us begin our liturgy by welcoming all who are visiting us today. If you are our visitor, please stand so that we may welcome you to Holy Spirit Church. Now let us welcome each other in the love of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So in the second reading today, Paul is writing about the barriers of hostility part. And in his context, he was writing about the divisions between Jews and Gentiles, the hatred that existed between them. In our day and in our context, we might think of the divisions of hatred between the state of Israel and the Arab world. In our country, we might think of the divisions of hatred between conservative and liberal, Democrat, Republican, and, 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 and so on. St. Paul insists that since Jesus Christ came into the world, the one Lord and God of the universe, he's, he's breaking down those barriers. So as we pray today, let's ask the Lord to fill us with his grace so that we can make every effort to cooperate and break down those barriers of hostility that keep us so, so divided. Lord Jesus, you are our justice and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you break down the walls that divide us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the compassionate shepherd who feeds our souls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, oh God Almighty, Father, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right end of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the People of goodwill. And on earth is to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, we may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot 
to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. Guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and staff that give me courage. Oh.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you, were, you once were all far off, have become near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with his commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. It was in last Sunday's Gospel that Jesus sent the disciples out two by two to preach, to expel demons, to cure the sick, and to teach. And now this week we read the story of their return. They come back to Jesus excited and overwhelmed about everything that had happened overwhelmed by their success. They tell Jesus what they had done, what they had taught. They tell him about the diseases they cured, the demons they expelled. And Jesus invites them then 
to come away by themselves to rest. Jesus wants them to, to take some time off by themselves, just him and his 12 disciples, and they're going to spend some quiet time together, telling stories about what happened on the road and getting some well-deserved rest. Coming away to an out-of-the-way place to be with the Lord. That's a beautiful image of what we do here every week. Gather in a, a place of peace and, and prayer and rest for a bit in Jesus' arms, in his love, in his mercy. But then what happens in the gospel story is that there are so many people who are desperate to be with Jesus that they rush ahead so that they can be there waiting for him when he and the apostles arrive. And they rush ahead in such a hurry that they forget to take any food along with them. No provision, provisions at all. And that's going to be next week's gospel story, Jesus feeding them. For today, Jesus and the Twelve have already begun to rest. They're making their way along, not in any particular hurry, leisurely making their way across the Sea of Galilee, taking, taking in the beauty of it all. It's so about a year and a half ago, a little bit more, I had the opportunity to spend several weeks in the Holy Land. And one afternoon, I was on a boat in the Sea of Galilee for a couple of hours with other pilgrims. It's a strikingly beautiful place. Uh, Jesus and his disciples making their way across the sea, just taking in the beauty of what God has created. Meanwhile, there's this whole crowd of people racing to get to where they know Jesus is going, to get there first, hurrying around the shore. And when Jesus and the apostles finally arrive, they, they see this, this vast crowd of people who are so hungry for what Jesus can give them. And so what began as a sense of, of compassion and care that Jesus has for the twelve who have earned this well-deserved rest, it gets expanded to the entire crowd. So Jesus teaches them all. And then we'll read next week how he feeds them. Jesus takes care of the people. I think that is a, a touching feature of this story. Because Jesus is still protecting the time for rest that the apostles need. You know, the, the, the apostles could have stepped up and to take care of the people and teach and whatever. They've just returned from a very successful mission. They've shown themselves capable but Jesus recognizes that they need to rest. So Jesus steps up to provide the crowds of people with what they need. And then when you look at the gospel story next to that first reading from Jeremiah today, you certainly get the sense that the gospel message for us today is much more about the shepherds than it is about the sheep. And that's a good reminder for us who, who are ministers in the church or for those who aspire to be ministers in the church. I hope we have some in our room here today. A good reminder that so much of the work we do on behalf of Jesus and the work we do in, in the church is described as shepherding. This is a reminder for those of us who have responsibility of working for God's people a reminder to be good shepherds. And in Jeremiah, God describes what good shepherds do. Shepherds after the Lord's own heart gather the sheep so that none of them, none of them are missing. They care for the sheep so that they have no fears. There's no trembling. Did you ever see a person trembling in fear? If not, think, think of those TV commercials about you know, cruelty to animals and the pictures of the dogs just 
trembling. It's, they're heartbreaking pictures. But a good shepherd cares for the sheep, so there is no, there's no trembling. Good shepherds, after the Lord's own heart, see that the sheep increase, multiply, that they grow. And then good shepherds do everything necessary so that the sheep can live in safety. So the reason why the church puts these two readings side by side this, this Sunday is to drive home the, the, the point for us that in Jesus, these the qualities of a good shepherd come together. Jesus is, is our example, our model. He's the one we imitate in all of our shepherding. Brothers and sisters, we are all shepherds. You are a shepherd to someone. We acknowledge our, ourselves as sheep often, and rightly so. We're all followers of the Lord, sheep of the Good Shepherd following him. But we are all also shepherds. If you're a parent or a grandparent, you're a shepherd to your children your grandchildren, our, our civil servants, you know, mayor, council people, police officers, and, and, and so on, protecting people in their jurisdictions, they're shepherds. Teachers, shepherd students, doctors, shepherd patients, accountants, shepherd pastors, employees in, in businesses, shepherd their customers, help them figure out what they need. Then in time, children turn into shepherds for their elderly and infirm parents. Think about it with me for a moment. That no matter who you are here today, you are a shepherd to someone. Even if it's just big brother, big sister, to little brother, little sister. And in whatever shepherding role we, we have, the invitation from the Lord is to follow his example, to make sure that we gather our sheep, and be sure that none of them are missing, none are missing out, to care for them in such a way that their fears vanish. There's no trembling here. To see that they grow strong and sure, to make certain that they are safe. To be a good shepherd, we have to follow Jesus' example, who is the good shepherd. And that means that to be a good shepherd after his heart, we have to be good sheep first. We have to be good followers of Jesus, keeping our, our eyes and our hearts fixed on him. That's the task of our lives, the task of Christian living, to be good followers of Jesus. And so every Sunday morning, we come away for a little while and rest. We gather here to, to refresh ourselves and our spirits, to refocus. So as we gather here to prayer and to praise, let's pray also for each other and all of the Lord's sheep who long for the care of a loving, merciful, compassionate shepherd. May we be good shepherds by becoming good sheep. Amen? Together, brothers and sisters, we give voice to what we believe as together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God and the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, 
and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. We lift our prayers and the needs of our world before the Lord, our Good Shepherd. For the church, for those who continue the work of the first apostles, for the ability to imitate the compassion of the Good Shepherd who seeks the lost, who calls us to justice, who feeds us daily, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For renewed commitment to faithful citizenship, to serve the least among us, to pay a just wage, to welcome the stranger, to encourage the prisoner, to negotiate differences, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For perseverance in our attempts to come away to deserted places to rest a while, for time to pray, for renewal of right relationship with the Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of discrimination, for victims of gun violence, for victims of payday loans, for commitment among us to address the complex problems of poverty and injustice, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families who live with addiction, for those who struggle with mental illness or depression, for all among us who are sick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations who are at war, in all places of conflict in our world, for all of us, for the will to imitate the love of Christ Jesus, who breaks down walls of division and preaches peace to all people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, particularly in the duck boat accident. May they be raised up to the glory of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Marlene de Brossard, who had a fall and is in Metro Hospital, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Martin Hanan, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, as we ask you to answer our prayers, we also ask you to fill us with the grace we need to cooperate with every effort you make to break down walls of hatred and division. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I need you, you need me, we're all a part of God's body, stand with me, agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need 
you to survive. Oh, I need you. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, in the one perfect sacrifice you brought to completion varied offerings of the law. Accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you blessed the gifts of Abel so that what each one of us has offered in the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again in yourself, so that a people, 
formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and gra graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those whom you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. This is the 222nd birthday of the city of Cleveland, huh. and it's also the first anniversary of our pastor, Father David.
Wow. Thank you. And I'm still as delighted to be here today as I was one year ago on July 21st. Um, today is also an anniversary I don't think even they know about. This is my ordination anniversary. Did I? Uh, July 22nd, 29 years ago. <laughs> and today, July 22nd, if it weren't Sunday, we would be celebrating the Feast of St. Mary Magdalene. Um, and I've always been sort of touched that my ordination day was on her feast day because she is one of the most infamous sinners of the New Testament, described as having Jesus had to expel seven demons out of her. Uh, evidence to me always that no matter what we do, we can never get past God's love, His mercy, His desire to forgive. And the church has always liked to call St. Mary Magdalene Apostle to the Apostles. She's the first, she's the first person to have witnessed the resurrection, to witness that Jesus was alive. Remember in the garden early on that Sunday morning, she's the one who saw Jesus alive first. Anyway, Apostle to the Apostles, she's, she's a saint that's always been uh, dear to me. So. Uh, thank you for your welcome. Um, I need you to survive. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Yes, he did. 